Hello, I'm Aubrey Shepard, and this is the 11th of June, 2012. And we've got some photos from the downtown square in Fayetteville and World Peace Weapon Prairie. Well, I said <laughs> that was Hill Avenue, and the Regional National Cemetery Improvement Corporation was having a garage sale, a yard sale. Maybe they'll do it again next weekend. Hope so, because they didn't sell it all. Anyway, you're seeing some of the wildflowers, and that's passion flower, and it's pretty important to wildlife. Uh, remember a few weeks ago, it wasn't in bloom, but I showed you uh, Fritillary, whose caterpillar uh, ate passion flower, that same plant probably. And that was an echinacea, and this is a Rudbeckia. They're both called uh, coneflowers problem with this one is, if you look in the background, you see some smaller ones. Well, they're normal. This guy, I've named it bread loaf because it's about the uh, size of a loaf of bread compared to a normal little round uh, roll or something. And I don't know what caused it to look that way, but it's pretty neat. And uh, I'm just hoping that uh, we see some more of those in the future. I'm not sure if I were a, a scientist who studied uh, plant pathology, I'd like that. But anyhow, this is uh, the uh, native uh, milkweed, the common milkweed, Asclepius syriaca. Okay, that's not native, but it's very popular in Northwest Arkansas and all over the country, I imagine. And it's, uh, oh, what is it? Mm, ran out of words. Anyway. These are some native wildflowers, and they come in multiple uh, variations here. You can see a uh, dark center with yellow, and then you'll see some redder versions. There's one. It, you know, it's all beat up for some reason, but uh, you can see the ones in the background that are perfect. But this one just had a neat look to me with the uh, buds behind it. So there's uh, that mix of... of, of, of native wildflowers, and the thing on the right uh, that you see there, the big leaves, that's the uh, giant ragweed. And uh, now that's Asclepius uh, viridus milkweed pods at the bottom of the picture. But again, the giant ragweed's growing in there. Why would I leave that in the garden? Well, it's because it's a very important seed plant in fall for the migrating birds. The other reason is when the uh, groundhogs come in your yard to eat your garden, they like that giant ragweed best. So they'll eat those tender plants and leave your other plants alone, if you're lucky. And there's some more things at World Peace Wetland Prairie. That's a tiny member of the mint family. And uh, that's a very zoomed up uh, or, or magnified version. And of course, you're seeing these still, and I've still got this mental block. I started to write it on my hand while I could think of it earlier, but no, no, it's out by the street at World Peace Weather on the Prairie, coming a lot of um, colors. And of course, there again is that non native. Hmm. Well, we'll see a bumblebee on it one of these days. There, on the square. You see a lot of this, children petting dogs, and these puppies are always uh, uh, for rent or <laughs> for adoption, whatever you want. And there's a kid blowing bubbles, and lady's just so happy watching him because he's so happy blowing bubbles. Didn't get a picture of a bubble, sorry. But uh, there's somebody selling blueberries. It's blueberry season. And there was a good uh, crop for some people in the area. There was fear that it wouldn't be, but it turned out okay. And the Omni booth on the right, they're actually doing a, a kids summer program with uh, uh, blueberries as a focus. Kids are learning to um, can the blueberries and maybe they're making pies. I hope they're doing something wonderful with them, but I haven't been out to Omni Center to see what the youngsters are doing. So. Uh, check on it. I think it's uh, well underway, but if not, it might be something your youngster would want to do. Till next time, this is Albert Shepard asking you to do your part. Keep the 
keep the water clean, the air pure, and the woods green. And please don't mow an area that's got some beautiful plants growing. See ya. Hello, I'm Aubrey Shepherd. It's the 14th of June 2012 as we record this, and let's go straight to photos. Dragonfly, one of the many. I just love the dragonflies when I get a fairly decent picture. I'm so proud. And that's a slight deviation, but uh, similar to one I've shown you the last two summers. It's a little bit different. Okay, that's the big World Peace Wetland Prairie sign, and just happened to catch an echinacea coneflower in bloom in front of it. You can see some of the words. That is a clear wing moth. Love to photograph those. They uh, don't look like moths and at a glance. A lot of times people think they're bumblebees until they recognize what they actually are. And there are multiple species of that and there are two different ones at World Peace Well and Prairie where these pictures so far all are from. Okay, that's the award that the city received as a, a community wildlife habitat or a, hab a habitat community. I think is the way they normally say it. And anyway, uh, the city's very proud of that. They've got more than 200 private residences uh, certified to meet the requirements. And um, a lot of, uh, a bunch of city parks and so forth, including World Peace Well and Prairie, of course. And that's a silver spot skipper. Beautiful little butterfly family that uh, uh, loves the Monarda plants, the uh, bee balm. There's a, a, a spider wart right in the middle of a bunch of uh, little daisies, little asters on uh, World Peace Wetland Prairie. We've been seeing those since February this year in Bloom in Fatville, and they keep coming in places. Now there are four species of insects on that one flower. This is some of the wildlife we're talking about. That's bird food. Here, World Peace Wetland Prairie actually had a certification sign since 2007. When we did our yard next door, we included a description of World Peace Wetland Prairie when talking with the people at NWF and, and put up a sign there. There's one of the many species of bumblebees using the bee balm. And uh, this is off-site. This is uh, actually over uh, uh, in front of my daughter's house, and uh, it's a magnolia. That's a snout bean, snout bean. Okay, the flower is pretty tiny, but the leaves are kind of round and interesting. That, uh, those insects who are mating are actually uh, known as leaf hoppers. And there you can see a close up of the, the big female with uh, uh, her bug eyes. Passion flower, of course, uh, they keep coming. They've been blooming since pretty early this year and hope to see them all summer. Keep yours watered and they'll keep growing more. That's the fruit of the passion flower. And uh, always uh, remind you that's called a maypop. This is short green milkweed. It's uh, Asclepius viridiflora. And this is the uh, common milkweed, Asclepius syriaca. See a bumblebee in the corner of the picture there. Not a good crop. That's blunt leaf milkweed. I don't, no, I'm sorry, that's the uh, Viridiflora foliage. And that's the close up of Asclepius Viridiflora short grain milkweed. And okay, this is a moonflower. This is a not a native plant, but it's very pretty at the World Peace Well at Prairie. So, oh. I'm disappointed this week that the Planning Commission allowed the first variation. Well, not the first variance, but the second variance. I didn't know about the first one. To allow someone to build a swimming pool in the uh, riparian area, the overflow floodplain area of, of uh, Mud Creek. And I was pretty disappointed. If you see the Planning Commission meeting on Government Channel, you might hear my remarks. It's just uh, bad to start varying from an important ordinance to protect our watershed such as that. Till next time, it's all the shepherd actually do your part to help keep the water clean, the air pure, and the woods green. See ya.